Welcome to a partly cloudy and coolish day in Thailand as I await the delivery of my new electric scooter. Please feed the YouTube algorithm by giving the video a like. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. If you want to chip in on my expenses, I now have Patreon and YouTube memberships. So while I'm waiting for the scooter delivery guys, I thought I'd run down the specs. So the company is called Niu, I think, N-I-U, it's Chinese import. And the Chinese are just starting to make a dent in the Thai market right now. You have to order this from a company in Bangkok called Dot Life. And they have some, uh, a few stores in some of the really big high-end shopping malls in Bangkok. Um, and they're pretty much gadget stores, high technology bits and pieces. And I always walk into those because that's the kind of guy I am. And one day I walked in and there was an electric scooter on the floor and I just about lost my mind. That was two years ago and I've waited two years for the model I wanted with the bigger battery to be available in Thailand. It was a China only battery at that point and the battery that it had was no better than my, my current scooter and I wasn't going to pay for a new scooter with the same range. So I held out for two years. After seeing the, uh, the Niu scooter in the store, I recalled uh, this article by Micah Toll, who is an acknowledged expert in the world of e-bikes uh, from real bicycle e-bikes all the way up to this size of scooter. He did a review of an earlier version of the NQI GT Pro and really liked it um, and actually bought one himself. And that is very high praise coming from Micah, being the expert that he is. Then he uh, did a further review of his scooter, which says it kept him car free for the last six months. And again, he's just heaping praise on the bike. Uh, it's almost the same specs as I have, the 3.5 kilowatt motor, top speed. This is in the dynamic mode, range of up to 140 kilometers. It's a bit longer than they're specking for mine, unless I put it in eco mode. The battery size is the same, same brakes, same suspension, same wheel size. Uh, so this is... It's just what I needed to reinforce my choice that this was the bike for me. He actually bought this accessory right here, which is a little uh, lower back pad for the passenger. He said he got that for his wife and she feels much more comfortable riding on the back of it. He also got this uh, cell phone holder accessory that mounts to the stock for the rear view mirror. Uh, we'll see if I go through with one of those, but there's lots of these available at my little shops in my town. But he just can't say enough about it. That put me over the edge. I placed the order in January and they said it'll be delivered in April. But then I got a call, uh, a line message about three days ago saying, hey, we can deliver it on Saturday, uh, which is about more than a month earlier than I was expecting. So I said, yes, bring it down. It's going to take them four hours to drive it down from Bangkok in the back of a truck. Uh, and I'm paying for delivery and for registration in my province. Now let's go over the specs. The battery pack is the key thing. It's made with 18650 lithium ion cells. Uh, it is a 2.9 kilowatt battery made up of two separate battery modules, one in the floor under your feet and one under the seat. It's made by Bosch. They are removable. You can charge it inside your house or you can charge them in the bike. And you'll get over 100 kilometers of range, which is double what I was getting on my old scooter, even with its pouch style lithium cells. It's got a top speed of 75 kilometers an hour which is 15 more than I was getting on my current scooter. It's a 3,500 watt Bosch motor, which translates to about four and three quarter horsepower. That's three times the power of my current scooter. 
It's got a smartphone app with 17 status items that are linked to the bike, including uh, diagnostics, anti-theft alerts, and you can even put a service request in through the app. It's got an LED display dashboard with all of your critical uh, numbers that you need. This has three driving modes, which give you a choice of power versus range, dual disc brakes, uh, as opposed to the rear drum brake I have in my scooter now, which constantly goes out of adjustment and I have to constantly fiddle with that cable. It's got a USB port for charging a phone, or I might tie my uh, camera system into that. Uh, and the whole thing costs 108,000 baht, which converts to about $5,500 US, which I think is a, it's a fair value for this bike with such great features and great engineering. And uh, despite the price, it's going to cost me uh, 12 baht to charge, which translates to about 30 cents. So I can go over 100 kilometers for 30 cents, which used to take my first gas scooter when I had here, that was about 120 baht to fill up, that's $4. So you want to pay four dollars, you want to pay 30 cents. And I can also bring the batteries up and charge them directly off my solar power and drive on sunshine. What is up? Ah, chai chai. Ah, chai. Swati crap. Oh, swai. Ah. Okay, just signed all the paperwork, gave them a stack of photocopies of my ID and stuff as required by Thailand. So let's take a walk around. It's got dual LED headlight, front disc brake, along with the rear disc brake, which is a significant improvement over my existing scooter. It's roughly the same size and shape of a lot of the other scooters that we've got here in Thailand, so it fits in quite well. One battery is in the front, the other one is under the seat. We get there by clicking open with a single lock as opposed to the two locks on my other scooter. Here's the one battery. If you want to take it out, you undo this plug and walk away. If you want to charge in the bike, then you remove this plug, plug the charger in. If you want to get at the front battery, you put the key in here, turn, unlatch, and lift up. And that battery is the same. You unplug it and take it out if you need to. Snaps back in place. Rear disc brake, 3000 watt motor, LEDs all around, standard kick stand. For the passenger, you push that and it snaps out and then it just clicks back in again. Good sturdy handhold bars or tie down straps for a passenger or some cargo. The interesting stuff is up here. This is the on button. You push that for on. Four-way flashers. This goes through the driving modes, and we'll see that. I'll power up the screen. Oh, and I get to peel this off. Oh, there we go. So it's got three modes. It always boots up in dynamic. Then you can go to sport or e-safe. It's got your speed, it's got battery power in bars and percent, and it shows you the a bar graph of your speed, I think. High beam, low beam, and the blinkers have a sound as they're blinking, and the sound is actually adjustable by cycling through, and then you hold it, and then it changes to a different sound. 
guy demonstrated this. I'll have to see if I can find another one and push in to stop. This is horn and this is cruise control, which is nice if you're on a long highway. Although I've always been a bit suspect of that on a motorbike. It's got a USB jack and a small cargo hook. I will have to add one of my own big locking cargo hooks here. This panel looks like it's going to come out quite easily. There's only a few screws that should come out so I can bolt the front hook in. And this is big enough for a case of Coke light right there. And then I put my groceries on top. And the last factors of the bike, this is the charger. It's a thousand watt charger and it's really beefy. And it has the built-in dual battery balancing system. It's got the home charging device, which is the splitter. You plug the charger in here, then there's a cable that goes to each of the two batteries. Two of these uh, custom cables from the output of the box to the input of the battery. So I'll just leave that here in my condo. We've got fancy box with the owner's manual. And it's got an extra alarm key fob and an extra key and something in a box. A new way forward. Wish I knew how to pronounce that, which is empty. Nice box. And this last little mystery thing. Ah, oh, it's a tools screwdriver and a wrench. I'll keep that in the bike. I'll find some space for it somewhere. So that's, uh, that's about it. It's an electric scooter with top quality products and technologies. So now I'm going to go take it for a ride. Okay, I just got back from my standard run to the grocery store. You can see my Coke light fits in nicely. And then with a bag of groceries on top, the hook is not great. I'm looking forward to installing my own hook for the bag. Efficiency is great. I started out at 89% battery and 11 kilometers. We are now at 82% battery and 20 kilometers. So that's, I lost 7% going nine kilometers, plus or minus a lot of rounding error and a short trip. That's a little bit better than one kilometer per percent. So that's a good rule of thumb. I got 82 kilometers left in the pack, but I'll stop and charge when I hit about 20 to 25. Um, did some experiments on the way up in e-save mode. It tops out at about 21 kilometers an hour and is very sluggish off the line. This is where you're in a parking garage or you're in a low battery mode. That's all that's good for. It powers up, defaults to dynamic. That tops out at 48 kilometers an hour, which is kind of an odd number. Uh, it's got great power off the line and it's a good cruising speed in town. Uh, this bar graph shows your energy consumption. So when you're accelerating, it's gonna come here and when you reach a steady speed, it's gonna drop back. And at 48 kilometers an hour, I was still only using 20% of the energy to keep me moving forward. So that's pretty efficient once you're actually rolling. In sport mode, it was going 79 kilometers an hour, and that is way, way more than I need. I was nervous, frankly. Uh, I was not wearing proper gear on my body. I do have a full face helmet but I didn't have any leathers, no long pants, no boots. So I will not be using sport mode at full speed very much, although I do like the power. The power off the line is great. Uh, there are two places in my town where I cannot make it uh, up the hill in my old scooter, and this one is going to be able to handle that perfectly. 
The uh, blinker system is great. It's got quite a loud sound so you know it's on and it will auto cancel. When you finish the turn, it, it turns itself off, which is great. It's got a combi brake. This um, activates the front and rear disc brake. Braking is absolutely fantastic. Um, now, the only downside is my old scooter has this like a uh, foot flange that extends off. I don't have that here. So when I'm carrying a load, I have nowhere to put my feet. I tried using the passenger foot pegs, but they actually go backwards, so that's no help. The only thing I could do was tuck my heel into that little space. That's hard to maintain and not particularly safe, so I think I need a, an alternative. Maybe I could have tucked my foot up into this little space here. I'd have to contort my way around like that, but that's a better solution. Otherwise, it's a fantastic bike with lots of power, highly efficient, long range, and no regrets. I'm very, very happy with it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to feed the algorithm and do all the YouTube things. Take care and see you next time.